Welcome to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. I am Dina Dale, your host, and I, we are so blessed to have two beautiful women that serve Catholic charities here in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. So we have Lisa Namakas, right? And she is the Refugee Resettlement Volunteer and Board Member and Award Winner, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And we have Ina Rue, who is a Catholic Charities intern, and you're also from the country of Ukraine. So we are so blessed to have you guys here talk about resettlement and our refugees that are coming to the United States. So Ina, we're gonna we're gonna start with you first. Your name is beautiful, Ina Rue. So mm -hmm. you came to the United States um, and uh, married a wonderful Cajun man that gave you the Rue last name, <laughs> which is great. Um, but tell us how you came. You grew up in Ukraine, is that right? And moved over. Tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, so, yeah, I did grow up in Ukraine until um, I was 25. So for, uh, uh, my mom is uh, from uh, a little area in Ukraine. It's uh, like a farming village where uh, I grew up and, and my uh, two brothers. So it was uh, yeah, from the time when my, my dad died when I was five years old. Our family had you know, difficulties was um, finding a job and supporting the family. Um, I think also like it was, uh, my mom had trouble, you know, mentally uh, handling all. And in Ukraine, uh, we have a thing where social uh, social workers, they can come and uh, take children if they think that, my, you know, parents not doing a good right. job raising them. So that was something that happened to me in the second grade that came and it took me to the orphanage, and that was for me a hard time because I didn't understand what, what was happening, and I used to just run away home, and they used to bring me back. Mm. And that was until uh, I finished uh, ninth grade, uh, and I came to uh, to the big city to study. So it was usually in Ukraine, if you like finish ninth or eleventh grade, you yeah. go to vocational school, okay. and they're usually free. So I was like, well, that was the opportunity to, you know, uh, start, I guess, new life and new opportunities. And, but I did find a bad company at first, you know, I had, I know it was a wrong crowd until mm. uh, the organization that was working there, they called Orphans Promise, and they work with orphans and social orphans yeah. around, now it's around the world. I guess it started in Ukraine, but now it's, in 60 countries. Wow. So they helped me. Well, first, like, uh, you know, when they invited me to their place, and back then I wasn't, like, really trusting to people or yeah. really cared, but they brought us, like, cookies, some tea, and I was like, hmm, they give, you know, free cookies, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> so they went there. That's why I keep saying that God bought, bought me with cookies, because, <laughs> you know, back then I wasn't really, didn't know where I was going, and... <laughs> You know what's gonna be with my life, and yeah. I didn't really care. Mm. But those people, um, you know, they took me in, and they uh, didn't only like offer me classes, which you know they had like English computer classes. And I was like, well, man, why not? But also they showed me through the work, you know, their compassion and love to me. They showed me God, and uh, that's when you know started having desire like to also help people. Yeah. Um, and I become the volunteer and in for five years before coming here I work uh, with the orphanages in one of the projects oh, Wow so yeah we oversee five orphan orphanages and for me that was the time when I realized that you know through the things I've been in my childhood and and you know every time I question why God you know didn't allow me why he well didn't care about me because I have uh, this terrible childhood and he showed me that you know like the eyes of those kids mm -hmm. around me and he said like that you know the now you can relate to mm -hmm. what they go and do to their pain and that was the time when I started getting interested in about psychology and um, so developed that dream it was um, that to come to the United States and study yeah and that was something that people laughed at me every time they heard my dream. Because huh. for me, you know, going from this uh, area where I grew up, people usually don't dream about things like that. Yeah. I mean, first it's 
crazy expensive. And I mean, there's a lot of factors there where people like not even attempt to dream right. that big, but I always had it. And I guess I'm just like hopeless <laughs> dreamer. Yeah, <laughs> never. That's and your spirit. Until, yeah, one day we have um, a director of like the main organization mm -hmm. you know, of this Orphan's Promise. Yeah. Uh, the main office is Virginia. She came to Ukraine and she uh, asked me, so like, I heard you, you want to study and um, so do you want to come to America? Oh, what? <laughs> so that was <laughs> for me. That's your miracle. Yeah. Yes. It was. It yeah. was a I love that story. Miracle for me. The Lord mm -hmm. to show you the eyes of where you were, mm -hmm. but the eyes of the children looking at you, but you giving them hope and yeah. opportunity to give back to that, and then the opportunity for the director. Mm -hmm. To come to that place at that time right. where you are and invite you to say, come study abroad. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you said yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did have a lot of doubts and all, but yeah, my, the fact that, you know, how miraculous I got responded to. And also I got like full scholarship, you know, and full housing scholarship. It was like a miracle at the time. And now I realize, you know, how difficult it is to get education in yeah. America. Yeah. I realize how even more how big a you know, miracle it was because it's something that it really doesn't happen to people. Yes, I know. <laughs> but mm. Indeed, and I was just, uh, yeah, I finished my bachelor's and I want to, uh, you know, future like further education and study. So my passion is for um, childhood trauma. So I want to study uh, psychology from this perspective. And, and so right now you're interning at Catholic Charities mm -hmm. then? Yeah. Yes. Is um, that through your education? Have you graduated with your bachelor's? Uh, yeah. Finished? I graduated, okay. yeah. In, so with interested. bachelor's in, in three years. And um, now I'm getting my master's in social work uh, from LSU. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Lisa, like, what's a different <laughs> story? <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, when you're coming from a time of just hopelessness, you know, as a, as a seven-year-old child, you know, growing up in a place where you're just like, I don't know why I'm here you know, to get with the wrong crowd, you know, and having yeah. influences. But the Lord, like, pursued you the whole time. And yeah. I think your desire was always within you. And then you mm -hmm. had the courage to say something, yeah. which somebody heard, obviously. And then and then they told someone, who told someone, and here you are, you know, because you had the courage to say something. Mm -hmm. You probably always had the spirit in you, too, just thinking about being in the orphanage and wanting to get back home and, so you had that drive of, of just fearlessness. Like, I just see courage all over you. Well, it's probably some I got from my mom. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. She, was, she yeah. has a really difficult life. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking back, I'm thinking, man, I don't know how this woman survived. But she always been, you know, such a fighter, such yes. a warrior. Even now, she always, like, gets positive from every, like, hard mm -hmm. situation yeah. and tries her best to uh, just, you know, have... And also, like, encourage people around, you know. Yeah. Like, even this morning, even though she, you know, she's in the middle of the occupied territory yeah. where it's, she hears the fights and the missiles blowing and it's, a, it's all. And then in the middle of that, she she calls me and says, like, oh, you know, I love you. Good luck today, you know. Yeah, like nothing's love. happening around. So she, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is always offering also, hope and joy to other people, too. Mm -hmm. And that's such a, a terrible time right now that people in the United mm -hmm. States are so clean for the people in Ukraine right now through prayer. Like, tons of prayer. I mean, a lot of people feel hopeless. I see so many Ukrainian flags. We were talking about that earlier. Just Ukrainian flags flying in the city. <laughs> and they're like, where did, really? You know, so there's so much support and love. And then right. hearing the stories from within... You know, there's so much hope, even like coming from people like your mom from within the occupied territories and territories that are being bombed, that there's so much prayer, even through Pope Francis, you know, and his just consistent prayers of intercession through the Blessed Mother, you know, so I'm giving that reassurance. And, and I know there's probably a sense of like, like you don't, helplessness, like you don't know how to help, you know, which a lot of people are feeling the same thing too. I mean, do you think that's something that, do you hand that on to your mom, knowing that, you know, there are people praying for them constantly? Does she know that? Are they aware yes. of that? I was telling her that, you know, anyone I know uh, is praying for her and really, um, that, you know, invest in, like, in every way to help her to 
you know, stay strong and also like the winter is coming. So it's now be the time where, you know, be, um, we we'll challenge in time, especially yeah. because the electricity is scarce now because the Russian, you know, the bombing electric plants and all. Right. But in rural area, I guess it's a little easier because, mm -hmm. you know, you need just a bunch of firewood. Yeah. Because <laughs> when I was little, that's how we were surviving, you know, even if we couldn't afford, afford the electricity. Right. You always can, you know, gather some firewood and have your stove and keep your house warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's something that we, uh, yeah, and through, through all of this, you know, how I'm, I'm so really impressed how Ukrainians are like never giving up, you know, yeah. even like if you think, you know, that's like strategies that I think uh, they used to, you know, break our spirits. Yeah. But actually, that's the opposite effect, you know, how people. It makes you stronger and yeah, resilient. How yes. people are like, resilient, they unite, they almost like help each other and encourage mm -hmm. and how the world, you know, also uh, unites to help. It's, it's really encouraging. It's like there's no way, you know, we can ever give up because right. there's so much, you know, behind this. Yeah. Um, it's just like a good sense of community among the people in Ukraine yeah. to help each other, mm -hmm. you know, just just carrying each other on their each other's backs. Um, I have an a article um, that stays on our refrigerator to remind us of what's happening in Ukraine until it's over. And it was during the beginning um, of the initial invasion. And there's a picture of a child in a school bus because they were taking the children. And her dad is on the outside of the school bus and he has his hands on the glass and she has her hands on the inside oh, glass. Yes, the and he's telling her Beautiful. goodbye. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? It was in the newspaper. So I cut it out in the newspaper and put it on the refrigerator mm. to remind us every day that that has not ended yet. Like there are still families that are separated. There yeah. are still families that are staying in contact, but then, you know, technically like fighting for their lives, you know, for their country. And so just, you know, we're about to take a break, but just be reassured of the prayers and pass that on to your mom. She can pass that on too. So thank you, thank you for sharing that with us. I know that's really hard, you know, to tell that type of story and your tears are just, they're real, you know, don't ever hold those back, you know, because we're crying with you. And, and there are just moments that we can enter into that, that blessedness of knowing that the Lord is with us So during this really tragic time. So um, we're going to take a break, give you a little break a little bit. When we come back, we're going to talk to Lisa about her work in Catholic Charities and immigration and resettlement for refugees. So stay with us. We'll be right back in just a minute. No, there's a light that glows by the front door Don't forget the keys under the mat When childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Don't expect a free ride from no one Don't hold a grudge or a chip And here's why Bitterness keeps you from flying Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie I know you got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind When the dreams you're dreaming Back to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith, especially today. I'm Dina Dow, your host, and we're continuing our conversation with Ina Rue, who is a refugee from Ukraine. And we just heard her miracle story of how she came to the United States, which I just, like you said in your quote, it's a miracle for me to come to the States, which is just a blessing. So thank you for sharing that with us. 
And Lisa Namakas, who is the Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Volunteer and a board member too. So Lisa, tell, tell us about how you got to be where you are at Catholic Charities and how you know, eventually you two met, you know. So tell us, tell us what you do. So I started out as a, you know, an ordinary volunteer, um, you know, with my kids. We went, uh, you know, four or five years ago, um, at least at this point, um, we, we just wanted something to do in the community. Uh, we just felt like, you know, volunteering in the nursery at church and whatnot was, you know, we were a little bit beyond that yeah, stage. And so yeah. my kids wanted to do something else. And so we contacted Catholic Charities and they partnered us up with a family from Africa. And we just started mentoring um, that family and, you know, did what we could and they ended up leaving quite quickly. So then we just... You know, I remember the phone call, you know, do you want to be partnered up with another family? I'm like, of course. <laughs> so yeah, I was so sad when the first family left. Yeah. So, you know, we'd just been um, sponsoring families when we could or doing other kinds of activities, um, you know, or support when it's needed. Yeah. So. What do you do when you sponsor a family? What does that look like? Um, well, you know, it, it, it changes depending on the family, I guess. It's sort of hard. I guess just in general, you know, you meet the family and... Um, you can kind of see what they need and see, you know, what, you know, what, um, you know, where they are in the community or where yeah. they are in their, in their life and journey here in the United States and do what you can to support them. Um, kind of probably come, so, some of the things that we take for granted, like yeah, the little things. Yeah. Lots yeah. of, um, lots of the small things that we take for granted. Um, you know, ESL, you know, English as yeah. a second language yeah. would, would uh, be a, the biggest, uh, you know, area where we can help. Um, but especially when there's kids involved, just simple things like the bus doesn't come today, what do you do? You yeah. know, or it's a holiday and it's not one that's really obvious. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you always make sure that you kind of help the family know when they can sleep in or when yeah. they need to get ready for school. Or, yeah. Um, you know, just or what to expect at school or, or holiday seasons. So were your children older when they volunteered for this? How old were your children? Yeah, they were I want to say 10 or 12. Yeah, is that is great. How did they respond to you know, accompanying other families? What was their experience with that? You know, their experience was, um, I think, a little bit cautious at first because they didn't know what to do. And with the language, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it yeah. can be difficult. So uh -huh. they would, you know, take cues and, you know, they would play games, you know, that they could like little rock games on the, you know, cement outside or, you know, maybe look at pictures and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, you can see after a few years and some families stay for a few years and you can see the friendships develop oh, and, wow. you know, the um, the mentoring that still continues through that. And I know my daughter, for instance, was uh, able to help uh, one of her friends, you know, get through some of the, you know, the um, peer pressure kind oh, of situations yeah. at school and they yeah. can talk things out in, oh, you know, a positive great. way. And yeah. so now looking back at that, you know, that was more than I expected. Yeah. Um, yeah. It yes, always but, is. Yeah. Whenever we do something, we <laughs> yeah. volunteer, we're like, oh, wait, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So when did you first meet, Ina? Like, when did you first meet? Well, I met her, I think, was it the first time when you gave your presentation at Catholic Charities about Ukraine and your experience. I, that might have been the first or it might have been the second time I met her. But yeah. um, you know, she told her story at Catholic Charities and it was just, you know, so powerful um, and such a wonderful experience and, um, so we've, and stayed in touch since then. Yeah. It really, um, you know, I actually, my grandmother was, I was adopted and my grandmother was from Ukraine as well. Really? And so, Oh. Her her mother's story, I think of my grandmother. Oh, um, yeah. She was the sort of the very strong one in the family. She was in Canada when I, you know, when I met her. Yeah. Um, uh, but she was very much the same qualities, sort of, yes. you know, did what she needed to do to keep uh -huh. the family and together. And you remember your grandmother. You had a relationship with your grandmother growing up? I mean, yeah. No, I met her later on because later. I was adopted. Uh -huh. And so, gotcha. um, you know, when there was a service in Canada that you know, eventually connected us up. Oh, and yeah. it was, well, it's the mother that needs to make the first initial contact, but the social services in Canada called the grandmother and she knew right away what was oh, going on. So beautiful. she was like, she made sure it all happened. Yeah, isn't that interesting <laughs> so, though? Like yeah. when you found out that Ina's from mm -hmm. Ukraine and mm -hmm. then her grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. the same thing. But what a beautiful mm -hmm. connection. Like what are the chances of that, you know, <laughs> being able to be connected? Yeah. I mean, God yeah. is in all over mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So how did you get to Catholic Charities with your internship? I mean, where, how did you uh, see uh, that opportunity? So, uh, well, the way it works, they usually, you know, tell them what you're interested in. And honestly, uh, back then, working with refugees wasn't something on my heart, per yeah. se. So mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I didn't mention because um, 
you know, I'm in the military now, so, and um, I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll work with military, some veterans, and some kids, and one of the places was Catholic Charities, and I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. But then when I actually started working there, I was like, wow. I was like, God, you knew. <laughs> I was like, it's something like, I was thinking like, man, it's like, like something I never knew I needed. But uh -huh. they, you know, how to, because I was looking for, it's harder when I live here to, you know, support Ukraine in this crisis. Yeah. And for me, I saw um, the opportunity to, you know, support people who come here. Yeah. You know, because when they lost a lot, and as Lisa said, there's a lot of, culture challenges that come ah. through and you know there's a different mentality and understanding of things mm -hmm. and so people you know usually are lost and just uh, you know, there's so much I can relate to to yeah. them and yeah. and through that experience also you know every day I felt grateful because you know sometimes you get caught up in like chasing your American dream and you're yeah. like yeah. you know I have a good house but I wish you bigger you know I want this <laughs> but I wish you better but then Every day I was there like, wow, you know, God bless me so much. And, you know, the way my husband, you know, provided my life here and God just blessed me with everything. So yeah. my every day was filled with Thanksgiving. And yeah. I was running to my husband and be like, oh my gosh, you're so, you're so great. I love you. You know, you give me so much. Yeah. And also, you know, thank you God and for this opportunity to, yeah. uh, you know, because I'm always, you know, looking for opportunities for my life to have meaning and yeah. that was for me a really good chance to be you know help other, like help ukrainians so when when people yeah. come to catholic charities and they're from ukraine i mean that's happening right and when when they meet you what what is that connection like for them for you i think for us is um was some so really unique because uh well first you know, I, I know the language, so yeah. I'll usually be like translate, mm -hmm. and uh, and usually like, so when I go to the lobby, I can like easily spot Ukrainians <laughs> because they're like just there, just looking around <laughs> and holding someone. You know, like, please help me. Aww. And when I'm saying you know hello in, in our language, and they're like, <gasps> you know, so that was like Aww. instant connection. You don't have yeah. to even know, you know, say nothing. You know, just like <sighs> almost feel like we, you know, instantly become friends and family. You know, because yeah. how you you know, connected uh, stuff that they've been through, you know, and that I've been through, like, living here and not yeah. able to help my mom physically, you know, but it's something that it makes it, this connection even yeah. stronger. Yeah, I mean, it's deeper than just the physicalities mm -hmm. of, of trying to live and survive. I mean, you have those connections, and we can make this easily, yeah. but there's, there's something to say about culture mm -hmm. and meeting someone that when you're in a foreign country and... and you know you're safe, but there's just so much unknown. Right. You yep. know, so you have to trust which you have, mm -hmm. where the Lord's leading you, which mm -hmm. they obviously have trusted, which has brought them to Catholic charities to be able to seek some type of refuge and hope that that life can be secure and settled. And that I, I I'm seemingly I'm guessing, but I bet you this is happening that what you're doing is the hope that you once did not have, that you now have, because you have such gratitude, and now you're helping people grow in their hope, you know, in their joy, in their mission in life, because it's it's like the, everybody has a purpose and a mission, and sometimes we're just in the dark times where we just can't see it. But to me, you're a light for them, for that. Do you see that in her every day? Yeah. Absolutely. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I understand many people, I mean, it, because I'm an immigrant, but being refugee here, it's even, you know, something, I guess, like, really, like, harder and deeper, you know, because yeah, I chose yeah. to come here, but many people, they really don't have a choice because their houses, their neighborhoods, their whole cities got blown up, and there's nothing left, like, you know, the brick on brick, you know, to seek shelter. Right. People, you know, scared for their lives, and... There's so much, um, you know, that I'm concerned about, but, uh, and also, you know, trying to help. Sometimes, like, my supervisors say, like, you know, you too, like, you know, emotional, over-invested, you know. I know it's, mm. in psychology, it's not really healthy, but I'm like, I just cannot help it. You right, know? It's, right. <laughs> it's yeah. just something that, like, 
I just want to, you know, give him everything. I just want to help him with everything. Yeah. I just want to, you know, just basically hold him in my hands and give him, you know, yeah. all the needs. Yeah. Because some people come in here, you know, we're just spending their last money on the ticket with a bag of, you know, necessities, with the kids. And mm -hmm. it's terrible. It's, uh, yeah. I really want to, you know, ask, like, and with help of Catholic charities, you know, because they're doing amazing work. and. Mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. be a part of it and also, you know, help with anything I can. Yes. But yeah. then to find this hope and you know, also show them that, that it's going to be difficult, you know, because, you know, dealing with immigration services and yeah. obtaining documents and all, it's not easy. But right. it right. takes time, it takes yeah. patience, but it is possible. Yeah, and they, pe they need people to help them go through that, which I guess that's mm -hmm. the kind of work that you do, too. Yeah. You know, it's helping people get through the paperwork and, and find their way around town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, today, uh, the Church of the Highlands has put together enough baskets for all the Ukrainians in town and uh -huh. some other people, so we're going to pick them up. Oh, and we'll that's make sure great. They like, this is the little things. Mm -hmm. So we're li almost out of time, but do you have an invitation for people to, to be a part of Catholic Charities? Like, how should they, if they feel called, what should they do? Um, go to the website and they, they'll be able to find a volunteer uh, link and application and fill out their information and then somebody will contact them. It would be either um, Island, I might, uh, if Island's busy, but Island uh, at Catholic Charities is a volunteer coordinator for the refugee side of things. Yeah. And Ina, any, any last words for us, for, for our fellow you know, men and women, those that we love in Ukraine, anything that we can do? Um, you know, as we came here to talk about uh, Ukrainians, how strong they are and how, you know, we're always like, more than ever, we're seeking to preserve our culture and keep our traditions alive. And I always want to, like, the people get encouraged also to, you know, to dig deeper and seek their own tradition, seek their own culture and preserve it and they'll motivate them to, you know, just act out of their find a purpose for their lives and, uh, you know, help each other. Because it's, I know, in reality, we don't have to help each other, but it's, I feel like it should be a natural thing, common, you know, for human, when you see other people suffer like that, yeah. it's a natural response to be like, oh, you know, I'll, I'd wish, you know, people help me yeah. if I was in situation. So yeah. how can I help? Uh, and we do really appreciate the prayers and everything the people in other different countries do. And in America, Louisiana do for uh, people. Well, well, those are going to continue. Yeah. yeah, so be assured of that, too. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know it's hard, but I'm glad that you found refuge here and, and know how deeply you're loved by this community, and especially by our Lord, too, and by your sweet husband, too, Mr. Rube himself. Yeah, thank you, Ina. Thank you, Lisa, for being so much with us. Thank you for being with us in this half hour of Catholic life. Until next time, may God bless you and give you his peace.